You know, Bernie, I could talk about you every day to guests as they come in here, <laughs> uh-huh. but it's all on me that I almost just choked on a Cane River pecan. Why? <laughs> I didn't do I mean, anything. No, I, I don't know. It was just a long sports weekend. Uh-huh. Stevie P is in from ESPN 1420 to kind of, yeah. kind of talk me off the ledge. I mean, yesterday, I had some friends who went to, out to Arizona to watch yesterday's game. And I, I was about halfway through, I texted them and said, well, too bad you have to go to a boring one. <laughs> well, it was just, it was, it was, I feel like it might have been one of the best games as far as excitement that the Saints played. A lot of points winning. scored. I mean, if you like offense, if you like the Saints winning, I mean, uh, you yeah. know, that, that that's a... Uh, I mean, I would much rather the Cardinals be the Falcons. Different right. bird. Uh, but, you know... Yeah. Take what you can get, right? Four touchdown passes by uh, by Drew Brees. I mean, you know, the running backs combined uh, had uh, had three touchdowns. I mean, you know, the defense left a little bit to be desired, but you know, bottom line is that they win the football game and they keep their very very slim playoff hopes alive. They're still in that in the hunt. Yes. Column. Yes. Um. So what does it mean from your from your chair? What do you think for them to to make it to the playoffs? I mean. They got to win it all. Not gonna happen. Right? Yeah, not gonna happen. They they need to win their last two games, and they need a uh, they they need a lot to happen concerning the uh, the Buccaneers and the Vikings and the Packers. They uh-huh. need all those teams to come out eight and eight, which which isn't likely. But that's that's pretty much the uh, the scenario. But uh, you know, uh, I guess the goal right now is to uh, is to get to eight and eight and improve one more game than what you had last year. Uh, you know, some speculation whether or not Sean Payton's going to return next season or or not. I think that that's probably uh, I, I think it's probably going to be the case. I think that he's probably going to return. Uh-huh. But uh, you know, a report came out over the weekend that said that the Saints would like to get rid of the uh, rid of that contract, free up some money, and maybe reshape reshape or restructure the front office a little bit. You know, I love how at the beginning of the season, you know, the the front office, the GMs, the owners. Oh, they love the head coach. The head coach is the best. Yeah. By the time it gets to the end of the season, it's open yeah. season. They stink. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For the, yeah. Things was, change really, really quickly, though. I mean, and, it, and a lot of people, I mean, that report was from NOLA.com. Yeah. I mean, you know, covering the Saints really closely. So I guess we'll see. I don't, I mean, I guess my, I, it's just like with, as a manager, okay? Mm-hmm. If not this person, then who? You're right. You know, and, and I think that's what it kind of comes back to. But, you know, take someone, and it's obviously a entirely different realm, but like an Ed Ogeron, mm-hmm. okay, that who who just seemed like if you would have asked four years ago and say in four years this guy is going to be the head coach, you'd say no way, right. you know. And so maybe it's like you got to look maybe deeper into your current coaching staff. Maybe there is one person who can fire him up, but you know, the, it's always and you got it right. I mean, it, it's not just okay. Do you want to keep this person? Is uh-huh. who you're going to get to replace? Exactly. It's, exactly. It's, yes. All right, uh, Cajuns, uh, disappointing uh, loss at the, the New Orleans Bowl, but you got to go to a bowl, so that's yeah. good. But the end of the season there, uh, how was that? I know you were in New Orleans for a lot of it, I yeah, think. Yeah, you know, it was fun. Can't keep track of you as being guys. <laughs> Y'all are always somewhere. The, uh, the the weather held off, you know what I mean? The yep. uh, the rain and the cold came in on uh, on Sunday, so I'm sure most of the fans had a, had a really good time. You know, 35,000 people there at the uh, the New Orleans Bowl. Now, to give Southern Miss credit, about half of the fans were, were Southern uh-huh. Miss fans, but all five New Orleans Bowls that the Cajuns have played in over the last five years, or last six years, those have been the, uh, fias, uh, the five highest uh, attended game. So, wow. you know, anytime that the Cajuns are there, normally there's going to be a lot of fans. And, you know, it was a good football game. Southern Miss jumps out to a 14 nothing lead. Cajuns able to tie it. But then, uh, you know, Southern Miss winds up winning it by a touchdown in what was a, uh, you know, a disappointing loss, but still a, a very entertaining football game. And I thought there were a lot of people that went to it to, I mean, my parents called over the weekend and were like, did you know you else playing at the Dome? We're going to go. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I know a little bit about uh. it. I've heard rumors that they're going to be playing, playing. this weekend. Uh, so, all right, good. Well, I mean, still a good we, – we kind of talked about it when they got the bid. I mean, it wasn't their best season. No. On You know, looking at it from 30,000 feet. But to obviously get to go to that bowl game, that's kind of like your lasting impression no going doubt. forward. All right, we'll look ahead to next year. And what else had, is going on and, big in your life? And they had pretty uniforms, too. And yeah, they sure <laughs> And, you know, something about the Superdome, and I've said it for years, I'm going to take all the credit because I'm sure someone much higher than me has said it. I think it's something about the lighting in the Superdome. Everybody looks good in the Superdome. Uh, it just look something. It looks look bright, like you're playing it, it, in Walmart. It's a lot or better now. It's almost like it's like what the Cajun Dome looks like right now, now with, with better lighting. Correct. But Christmas week. I know y'all going to be playing a lot of Christmas songs. Two Christmas songs that I don't get. Okay. One is "Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow" because it doesn't mention Christmas. 
Okay. That's Another right. one is the 12 Days of Christmas with uh -huh. a partridge in a pear tree. Why isn't it a Brady in a pear tree? Why isn't the Partridge family? Why is that? Why, 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 why do you hate the Brady Bunch? What's a Partridge? Danny Partridge? Where's Partridge? I mean, I'm just oh, asking. A pear tree. You know, and yeah. the other thing is the most wonderful time of the year. There'll be scary ghost stories and tales of the oh, glory. glory. I, I've never told a scary ghost story, unless you consider Scrooge. Not at uh, Christmas time. Uh, but that's not a scary ghost story. All so right. I disagree with those things concerning Christmas. Mm, Other than that, mean? I love it. What do you think about Baby, It's Cold Outside? No. I mean, it's a good song, but I don't, you know. So, because you know what 2016 has done to that song. Yeah. Now there's this big internet discussion. Now there's a big discussion yeah. on what yeah. was happening. But as I told Bernie, and I stand by my argument, it was written at a time when Lucy and Ricky slept in twin beds. Uh huh. <laughs> so y'all can't right. get too crazy. Ozzie and Harriet. Yeah, yes, y'all uh -huh. can't, it, you know. Hmm, anyway. Uh, well, uh, well, go do you, ahead. Do you have any more commentary on any other music that we should know about? Well, today? there's probably a lot, but I mean, yeah. You know, I all mean, right, but Christmas-wise, you're okay Christmas, with pretty much all Christmas, the Christmas except music, except those, except those three songs. Except those I mean, three. I, I should be a Brady and a pear tree. Okay. And uh, there's no scary ghost stories. Uh -huh. And um, you were never freaked out by Scrooge, let, Ebenezer Scrooge. No, I was never either. Never and, either. You know, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. I actually uh -huh. got more snow in like January than what you do in December anyway. Uh huh. Okay. So, I mean, it's, so, not, yeah. it's a good song. Do you I have like a it. Favorite the best. Song? Oh well, a, a marshmallow world by by Dean Martin. Really? Oh yeah. Which has more a Christmas song than wow, Let It Snow because it's the marshmallow track. world in December. <laughs> it's the greatest time of the year. This guy, this guy right Great here. Great Christmas movies, Die Hard. Which, if you remember, they were having the Christmas party. You're I, right. Yes. I always forget yes. about that. Yes. yes. And they had Let It Snow in there. Reginald Bell Johnson always plays a cop. The cop the always cop. plays a cop. You're right. Yeah. He play, and he was you know always who that Carl. Is, Bernie. He was Carl yes, in the show. I know who that is. He was Carl and a cop yes. in Die Hard, and he was Carl and, and a, a cop, cop in Family, Family Matters. Matters. Yes. 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 Gosh, you know, you just never know what you're gonna quite get. It's like a, it's like a little mixed nuts can. Uh -huh. You don't know what oh, you're yeah. gonna get with Stevie P. <laughs> I like it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Just, just take out the Brazil nuts because those are bitter. Nuts. I understand. <laughs> CVP, ESPN 1420.